the thing that everyone wants to know about the snare. coveted snare. Um, yeah, so this this is quite a big kind of it's yeah. a big ish snare. Um, you know, it's uh, it's got a nice bottom end. Yeah. Transient. It's got that acoustic-y kind of sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the kind of shape, roughly, we look for on the spectrum. Um, the tra- the actual tran- the meat of the snare matches kind of the top end. Yeah. And actually, this, again, was dragged in from another project. Uh, and there's a chance it's not actually in the right key for the project. But uh, so that's something you have to watch out for if you're dragging in samples. Obviously, they need yeah. to be tuned uh, so they sit properly. But little do people know that kick two can also be made um, to use for snares. Kick two can be used uh, to make snares. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing is it, it, the name kick two is pretty misleading. I think they've kind of pigeoned them holes, uh, pigeoned Pigeon holes themselves out. a because <laughs> they should have just called it transient two or something. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, the the only thing that's coming out of this is the transient, and it doesn't actually have a key as such. It's literally, you can see how short the actual amp envelope is here. This window is 389 milliseconds. So this is really short, and it's just the transient. Because kick two is just a pitch envelope. Like it's just a sign, like sign, yeah, sine sign wave envelope, envelope generator. Um, so there's absolutely no reason you can't use it to make edit and you know use it for all of your transient needs. Um, so yeah, we're just using this again. So it's quite like a steep, uh, steep envelope. It's going to be a lot quicker than the kick. Yeah, be yeah, much quicker. So if we compare the two. Um, windows here. Got the kick on the top. It's actually, yeah. So you can actually see where the one point one. That's an eighth of a. No, it's like a a sixty fourth note. I think. <laughs> I don't know, but um, you can kind of get an idea visually for how quick. Like you can see if I zoom in here, like how much shorter this is. Uh. And uh, yeah, so that's what's giving the snare its click at the very start. So it's obviously a very important part. Um, you want to try and avoid having a long, a long kind of um, transient. You, you always want it to be quite short. Yeah, I have used this before to if you uh, extend this node here, you can use that to create because in the snare it's like made up of. A few different parts. So generally, we want like a transient layer, which is this, and then a tonal layer, which is kind of where the key of the actual snare sits. Oh, sorry, uh, which I've used a vocal for, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, but you can use you can use kick two as well. If you extend this, then you can see it's bringing out the, the actual tonal part. So you could tune it that way, and then use that as your. But for this particular snare, it was easier to use a separate layer, just have a bit more control over it. Um, and then just just use this just for the transient. Um, and in terms of processing, yeah, made it some mono. I think it's mono anyway for some reason, so I don't know why I bothered doing that. <laughs> Extra mono. Um, yeah, there's just some compression going on here. Sometimes I don't know why I do stuff. Because this is like... Somebody's limiting, really. It's basically just, yeah... Zero, zero attack. But the ratio is only at four. I think you just, you know, sometimes you just make decisions in, <laughs> in the heat of the moment and they don't necessarily... They make sense at the time. But, uh, I mean, all you need to take from this is that it's... It could be... I don't know if it's really doing much, to be honest. Yeah, it's not really doing much. It might have served a purpose earlier on in the stages of um, of making the transient. Uh, we've got some EQ here. So that's just starting to shape the transient a bit more. As you can see, that's making quite 
difference. Fairly big difference, yeah. Yeah. There's a little resonance going on here. Which you might not necessarily need because there's um a separate layer for the for the tone. Um after this we've got Oh, okay. So this is basically saturated. We've got again this um the virtual mix rack. Uh I think this is it's meant to like replicate a preamp stage, I think. Um and there's these different um uh, saturation kind of modes that are like uh, emulating different mixing consoles um, so I think I probably just played with them picked one that I thought sounded nice obviously the drive's on full so yeah it just makes it sound a bit okay. it's I mean absolutely rammed through there so yeah. I think it's it's doing something <laughs> and then a little boost here on this EQ and this EQ is a it's a passive EQ so I don't think it's colouring the sound too much other than the boost that you see uh, that you see here. So unlike the other ones in the virtual mix rack, it's not like... It's, it's less characterful, this one. Uh, it's just it's just boosting that. Uh, after that, some distortion from Trash. All this is doing, again, a little gain boost. Um, the pre... In the input stage here is boosted really high, so it's like going really high into this uh, this wave shape here, and then turned right down afterwards. I'll put the gain stage in some clipping. I mean, you could you could really do all of this in trash, I think, but uh, yeah, in this case, just uh, use different plugins for it, and then some limiting at the end to round it off. So without all of that stuff yeah okay there's no sound coming through that's weird <laughs> what yeah it's just very much it's a nice. click sound and then with the processing it's sits better in the context of the actual snare um and then a rim shot layer which actually it's called I've called it rim but I don't think it's actually a rim shot at least just a snare. So with this on there, uh, it's just an empty addictive drums patch just with, it's not one of the presets, uh, just with the snare on there. And yeah, so similarly, similarly to how we process the kick, um, I've taken off, I've, I've added some attack here, so it's not getting, the, the hit of the snare isn't getting in the way of the transient. Um, and then using addictive drums, it's like often a case of just picking, what picking a nice sound to fit, because it's like got a really good library of um, of drum sounds. Cycling through and then pitching it and processing it to make it fit with the uh, the rest of your kit. And how generally how long the attack like do you want the decay to be on this layer is really just up to taste. Um, yeah, you can make it quite long if you want. Depend on the tune, I guess. And yeah, then... I mean since there's no kick on the second kick, you could even make it a bit longer. You know, so it mm. kind of it fills out the gap a little bit till the next snare. Yeah, you can make it quite extreme. Um... And so there's quite a lot of filtering going on in the actual addicted drums here. So all the top end taken out up to about 3K, all the bottom end taken up, taken out up to about 666, the devil's number. <laughs> uh, so really this is just for the, is, is for the ring of the actual snare. It's giving it like that more acoustic sound. Right. The top end we add in. Bit later. Yeah, so the top end we've used this white noise layer, which we'll go into after. Uh, and with a lot of snares, it sounds quite nice and also quite a natural way of doing it is um, having a hi hat at the same time, like you might have in an actual drum kit. So uh, in Addictive Drums, you can link drums, which is what we've done here. If you click this and then drag it onto here. You can link it to the hi hat, so when it's triggered, um, 
It'll be triggering this hi-hat at the same time. Which again has got some processing on it. Um, taking out the bottom end is quite short, so without the envelope, it's a bit too long. So taking the decay right down. And yeah, that's that's the kind so of... So just, to, just to see what a before and after sounds like without the, the fundamental. Yeah, so... You can sign it, kind of see it's just quite thin. It's quite thin without. That's obviously the. I mean, it doesn't sound bad. It's just it's not gonna hit in a. For me, it doesn't. Yeah. It's not gonna I cut through on a on like a system yeah, well enough, especially when there's so much loud stuff around it. Uh. Yeah. That's why you gotta kind of recreate the transient yourself synthetically to to really make it kind of hit hard. Uh, with the the rest of the tune. Yeah, the, the danger is that you might start trying to do all kinds of resonant boosts and stuff, and, <laughs> and if you're not, yeah, if you don't have a fundamental. And what happens is you're just going to make it sound muddy at the end of the day. It's just not going to sit right. It, you are just yeah. polishing a turd. Right at the end of the day, it's like just yeah. uh, by breaking it down and and recreating each part yourself, you can really um make it sound how you want it to sound yeah um, it's, uh, yeah it's a bit of a puzzle like you're just fitting multiple pieces together yeah um, to the end result yes uh, and so here we have an EQ which whoops let me put this back um, an EQ so that's taking out what I'm guessing is the fundamental because we're really only using this layer to, to for like the kind of upper mid tone qualities of the mm -hmm. snare which are making it sound like organic and acoustic so this is information that we don't want clashing with any other parts of the snare so I've taken that out and then obviously uh, I think it's just bringing up the volume I uh, probably did actually mean to limit that I think maybe it was limiting it and then when you make some changes earlier on in the chain then the level drops and then it's obviously not limiting anymore but <laughs> either way um, I would normally yeah do some limiting there or some distortion or something just to level it out because um, when we're talking about limiting and clipping at stages like that's even within the stages of these layers so like not just at the end here like the individual stages are being limited so it's like everything is just squeezing all of the like volume out of everything that we can um so yeah on the next layer which is just yeah just filling out the top end this is just a it's a long really long white noise sample that we've shaped in the sampler so it's just yeah, yeah. this is uh <laughs> use this in all of our tunes uh <laughs> it's just noise bounce which is just some noise that bounced out <laughs> So, uh, well, if you put in noise bounce here, yeah, it'll come up and we just use it for it's just like a multi purpose. Um, there are so many of the same one because they duplicate yeah, yeah. in multiple yeah, so there's folders, like hundreds so there's of them now, which are all just the same, same one, same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, this is just got an amp envelope on it, um, on its own. It's just a little layer, it's just, it's like. Basically kind of smoothing out the whole sound. Um, just makes the whole thing a bit more pleasing. Uh, and gives the mm. gives the snare a bit more presence. Yeah, that's good, definitely going to help the snare cut through the mix. Yeah. But you don't want to go too hard on it. Like, um, make it too harsh. And then it just kind of sounds like a layered hat if you mm. put too much on. Yeah. Uh... So, I mean, that stuff on its own is a functional snare, oh. but uh, wanted a bit more body and, like, tone uh, to this one. So, actually... It's more of a creative layer, I guess. Yeah, but it this is what gives it the kind of beef at the bottom end uh, that will help it cut through, like... Uh, just give it some give it a bit more welly, really. Um, and as a testament to how you can use anything for this. This is just, this is a vocal that I think, I mean, you could use anything because I mean, the way that it's processed, it's like you're just bringing out resonances. 
so that's how it sounds on its own. I mean, you could use a synth to make that or anything, really. Um, it's just fun sometimes to use some in a bit more interesting. Um, how's the whole thing sound? <laughs> Yeah, so it's just a really pitched down vocal and then EQ to isolate um, the frequency probably which is what we want the key of the tune to be at which isn't actually is in A but I mean as I said this is, this snare's been dragged in from another track and that track was probably actually it was yeah it's that Reese one yeah uh, so that track was in A uh, so that's why this is tuned to A but I mean this tune will be in E, so we'd want this snare to be, either be an it's, it's, E or B. Um, B being the fifth yeah. in the harmonic series of that key, so I'd pitch this up by two semitones. So now it's in, match, now it's yeah. in B. And I probably also need to pitch up this is what I was saying before about making sure it's in key. So it probably won't go up high enough, but let's just see if that sounds right. I mean, it sounds okay. That would need more adjustment, really, but um, it's fine for the moment. <laughs> Um, yeah, so and then processing on the snare all together without this stuff, um, but it won't have enough level to begin with. If we're just looking on the uh, oscilloscope here, yeah, you can see it's like the levels are kind of all off, yeah, uh, between the different layers. I mean, I guess you could get them to sit better that way, but. Everything sounds better when you just distort it. So we've got a bit of a boost going on here at the roughly where the fundamental is. And then into some distortion. Uh, and then finally some limiting. Which sounds, sounds pretty mashed. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I think it works for this style, though. Right? It's funny how, uh, yeah, I started like, um, it, you'll always hear mixing engineers talk about how it's important to uh, not solo stuff too much and work on them in isolation because at the end of the day, you're, you're making all these sounds to, to sit uh, alongside other sounds. I think people don't think about that enough in electronic music because it doesn't seem as relevant because you're making each sound individually. But I think it is important because when you like are making a kick or a snare, I mean, to me, that sounds a bit too distorted and a bit squashed. But in the context of the track, actually, it does punch through. So it's funny how... I don't know, Funny how that works. So you need to make sure not to get too lost in, um, you know, working on stuff on its own. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I mean, you know, it's not perfect at the moment, but it's it's a good starting point. Uh, something we'd probably work on a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's ba that's a basic kind of layout of our layers with uh, a kick and a snare. 